Hi, chemists. My name is Kim, and today we are going to be diving a little bit deeper into classifying hydrocarbons in organic chemistry. Our learning goals for today are going to be to identify alkenes as a class of organic molecules and explain what makes them unique, and to do the same thing with alkynes. Make sure you've already watched my video talking about alkanes before this one. We will discuss why alkenes and alkynes are considered unsaturated hydrocarbons, while alkanes, with an A, are considered saturated. And given the name, structural formula, or chemical formula of an organic compound, you will determine whether or not it is an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne. Let's get to it. Table Q actually pretty much tells you everything you really need to know about the difference between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. An alkane is a hydrocarbon containing just carbon and hydrogen that contains no double or triple bonds. So an alkane only contains single bonds. An alkene contains at least one double bond. And an alkyne, you guessed it, contains at least one triple bond. The examples that are shown in table Q are showing ethane, which is an alkane with two carbons, ethene, which is an alkene with two carbons double bonded together, and ethyne, which is an alkyne with two carbons triple bonded together. These are the simplest alkenes and alkynes. It can get more complicated as the carbon chains get longer because not every single carbon in a carbon chain will have a double or triple bond. We use numbers on carbon atoms in the parent chain to determine where the double or the triple bond is located in an alkene or in an alkyne. So when you see a number in front of the name for either of those types of compounds, that's simply going to be telling you where the double bond is found. Here are a few examples, and you don't need to worry about this too much because the rules can actually get even more complicated. But in basic terms, if we see a number along with the name of an ethane or ethyne, so for example, if we see 1-butene, E-N-E, -E, the but, B-U-T, tells me that I have four carbons. I can look at my reference table to remind myself of that. The but means four. And the one in this case is telling me that the double bond is between carbon number one and carbon number two if I'm naming all of my carbons in the chain. So if I name them one, two, three, four, the double bond is on the first carbon. This is different from this example, 2-butene, which is essentially the same, but now the double bond is between the second and the third carbon. So those numbers are just telling you the location of the double bond or the triple bond. So here is one butyne. This is butyne and not butene because there is a triple bond between the first and the second carbon instead of a double bond. And it's one butyne because the triple bond is between carbons one and two. Here's two butyne where the triple bond is between the second and third carbons. Notice butane, which has four carbons, all of which have all single bonds coming around it, has the same beginning three letters of its name, but with alkanes, we never need to use a number if we have a straight chain, just a bunch of carbon atoms in a row with nothing branching off. And so this is, looks like a simpler formula. Notice how similar all of these structures are to each other, but the subtle differences that help us to tell the difference between an alkene and an alkyne and an alkane. So you may have heard the term saturated and unsaturated when it has to do with health. We think about saturated fats as being less good for us than unsaturated fats. In chemical terms, which is all we're going to talk about right now, a saturated hydrocarbon is just an organic compound where each carbon atom is bonded to four other atoms each. So essentially carbon atoms that no matter what, even if you broke a double or triple bond, right there, you couldn't form any more bonds to carbon there. Each carbon atom is already forming four single bonds each. So unsaturated hydrocarbons contain at least one double or triple bond. That's really the only difference. That means all alkanes always are going to be saturated because every carbon atom is single bonded to other atoms. Alkenes and alkynes are always unsaturated because you could always break that double bond 
and add one more atom bonded to each carbon atom or two more atoms bonded to each carbon atom in the case of a triple bond. So when we say saturated, we really just mean full. Is carbon already bonded to four other atoms all over the molecule? Let's do some practice. Is this an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne? C10H20. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds here. Notice I am planting table Q here for you. Notice the general formulas. I'd like you to see if you can figure out what series of hydrocarbons this belongs to, alkane, alkene, or alkyne. Pause the video if you need more time. So this would be an alkene, because if we look at the general formula, Cn, H2n, that essentially means multiply the number of carbon atoms by two, that's just gonna give you the number of hydrogen atoms. And that's exactly what's happening in this chemical formula. 10 times two is 20, C10, H20. So this must be an alkene. Let's look at another example, very similar. C4, H6, alkane, alkene, or alkyne. So C4H6 would be an alkyne, because if I look at that formula for C4H6, that matches CnH2n minus two. The best way to figure this out is to guess and check, right? It couldn't be an alkane, because if it was an alkane, CnH2n plus two. So C, the number of carbon atoms is four, four times two is eight, plus two is 10, That's, so it can't be an alkane can't be an alkene because four times two is eight. So alkyne, four times two is eight, minus two gives me six. So that correctly fits into C4H6 because two times four minus two is six. What about C6H14? What do we think? Alkane, alkene, or alkyne? I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. You've got 20 seconds here. Pause the video if you need more time. So this would be an alkane. If we look at the formula, six times two is 12 plus two is 14. So this, that's the formula that matches C6H14. If we look at table Q, that's the general formula that fits. Let's just look at this name and figure out alkane, alkene, or alkyne. And I'm gonna set it, the timer to 10 seconds here. So this would be an alkyne. The giveaway is the ending of the word, Y-N-E. And just, just to show you, this is what this particular alkyne would look like. Um, the second carbon in the chain, we would see a triple bond between the two carbons there. If you count up your chemical formula, you would have C5H8. Butane, again, we will take 10 seconds. Alkane, alkene, or alkyne. This is an alkane and an A-N-E, right? We looked at this one before, the chemical formula would be C4H10. Finally, one hexene. Let's take 10 seconds. Alkane, alkene, or alkyne. This one is an alkene, it ends in E-N-E. -E. And if we wanna be a little fancier, we can say, okay, one hexene. Hex means six, if I look at my prefixes table. So that would be C6H12. And because there's a one there, that tells me the double bond is on the first carbon. 
Let's check back in on our learning goals. Hopefully you feel comfortable classifying compounds as alkanes, alkenes, or alkynes using table Q. And you have a little bit of a sense of what makes a compound be considered saturated versus unsaturated. Nice job today.